toughest is at this point. We know one of the contenders in our big championship game tonight. And the next game will give us the other competitor for the Class A crown. Now here's Ray Scott with that special interview we promised. Returning to Lawrenceville, win or lose? Well, win or lose, we're going to have a big homecoming. Uh, we are staying at the Holiday Inn in Urbana at the present time. Our team is and a lot of our fans. And tomorrow about 10.30, we will be leaving and going on Interstate 74 to Danville. And we will leave Danville and go on Route 1 south to Lawrenceville. <coughs> And it's my understanding that the Booster Club in Lawrenceville is in the process of getting a big car caravan to meet us north of Lawrenceville with a fire truck, et cetera. We will parade around Lawrenceville for quite some time and conclude with a pep rally at the high school gym at approximately 1.30 in the afternoon. Well, win or lose, there has to be a great deal of enthusiasm, right? You really can't feel too badly. Uh, regardless of what happens, you'll be greatly gratified, of course, if your team wins. Right. But even in a loss, it was a tremendous accomplishment for them to get here. Right. Uh, at the first of the year, my prediction was, excluding tournament action, that our record would be about 15-5, and five, and we have far surpassed that. So I'm very pleased with our boys. They're an excellent group of kids fine students, uh, well-disciplined, and uh, we just couldn't be more happy with them. Mr. Perlhoff, thank you. We're going to make sure it is just that way at Lawrenceville because you have things going on all year long, like Mr. Olson was saying. You have a booster club also in Lawrenceville. What kind of things do they get involved with that can make your job easier as an administrator? Can they take some pressure off you and, uh, and well, take over some things that would free you up a little bit? I think so. Um, they get the fans organized. Uh, if you look out in our crowd, you'll see an awful lot of red and white. And uh, they have uh, chili suppers for our boys and members of the Booster Club. They help lead the yells. Uh, they're very vocal, as you can probably tell from the <laughs> yes, stands. They are. And uh, they, they build up the kids and the adults and just kind of get the whole thing organized. And uh, we're kind of interested in winning the first place trophy if we can. Two years ago, we have one that's in our trophy case, and we like matching bookends. Mr. John Brohawk, the principal of Lawrenceville High School. Lawrenceville, population 5,900, won the first Class A tournament in 1972. The Indians, with an enrollment of 747, reached here this time with a 27-3 and record. Situated in southeastern Illinois, in oil country, Lawrenceville is the county seat of Lawrence County. Of the Illinois High School Association, Marty Brown will jump center for Ottawa Marquette against Rick Leesby. And we're underway at Champaign-Urbana. And Dickerson comes up with the first tip-off. And here is Hydrator. Scheidler puts it up. Comes off out of bounds. And it looks like a pressing defense at the outset, Ed McCauley, on the part of Lawrenceville in the white uniforms. Lawrenceville is in their press. Ottawa Marquette opened up with his own. Lawrenceville can apply pressure, and there Rick Leesby takes it. Leesby takes the ball away. Here's Jay Scheidler. Won't drop. Leesby gets the rebound. And is there a foul? There is. Keith Renkosik went on the arm. And at the line will be Rick Leesby, the highest score in this tournament. Two free throws. You might be a little nervous. That's understandable. And Wolf, Kim Wolf is there for the rebound. And two points for Lawrenceville. Across the timeline comes Shively. Now Tabor. Coming out high is Marty Brown over Wolf. Not there. Won't drop for Shively. And Leasty comes up with a rebound. And hustling it up court is Jay Shidler. The sophomore goes all the way. And a beautiful block. Beautiful block. I think that was Marty Brown. Beautiful. Didn't follow him. Got up and got the ball. But Lawrenceville is attacking. Hydebrader will pass it in. And he does to Rick Leasty. Kosick battles for the rebound, jump ball. Hydebrader is there at 5-9 to battle 6-6, Keith Renkosick. 
tell you one thing in a game like this, there is pressure, and you feel it. And well, when a team comes out and pressures you, it just makes it that much more difficult. You can't make a mistake. Ben Kosick tips it back to Connors. Now Tabor brings it up, hounded by Hydebrader. Man for man defense by Lawrenceville. It goes into Ren Kosick, and his jumper is good. We have our first tie of 2 2. Hydebrader and Scheidler will bring it up against the 2 1 2 zone thrown up by Marquette Ottawa. This afternoon in the first half of the game, Lawrenceville was successful in moving the ball inbounds. I mean, into the middle of the zone. In the second half, they, put, they went around the outside of the court as if they might be a little tired. It'll be interesting to see how effective they are in breaking this zone. From the corner, Rick Leasty has his first two-pointer of the game, and it's Lawrenceville, 4-2. Across the timeline is Shibley. Now Tabor at the point. Hydebrader follows him inside. Outside to Marty Brown. Wolf is on him. Foul. Blocking foul. Wolf. Out of bounds it comes to Marquette of Ottawa. Hey, Timmy Wolf, 6'2", 148-pound senior. He's uh, not too heavy. He's pretty strong, but he's got a tough job covering Marty Brown tonight. That's the matchup. The lead pass was for Connor. But it goes out of bounds. Nope, there was a foul called on Connor. And it's out of bounds to Lawrenceville. Leading by two. We've had two minutes of play and just six points scored as the teams are just now battling to settle down. Hydebrader, Scheidler, least he came out high. Now he's going back to the baseline. Hydebrader. Wolf, good shooter from there. Tim Wolf has his second field goal, and Lawrenceville leads six to two. The Indians got off to an early start this afternoon in defeating Chicago Christian. Tabor gets it inside. Connor saves it. Marty Brown can't get it over Wolf. Renkosik. Keith Renkosik has scored all four of Marquette's points. Hydebrader takes his time. He wants to study this 2-1-2 zone. Dickerson is sliding in and out of the middle. He's out of the high post right now. Low post, Leasty. He has the ball. Take it away. And controlled. Lead pass for Marty Brown. Field goal. Foul. Hydebrader. That's worth another look if we ever saw one. Watch the replay on it. Marty Brown had good control. Beautiful pass from Nick Tabor. Brown has it. Here comes Hydebrader. Good body control. Back live. We have our second tie of the game at six. Brown unties it. Three-point play. Marty Brown, the leading scorer of Ottawa Marquette. Scheidler. Ray, you'll notice how they hesitate or they pause. He comes over, Scheidler up, missed again. Dickerson took steps. Out of bounds, Marquette. Now let's pause five seconds for station identification. WCIA Champaign, W49AA Springfield. Marquette with the ball, behind the back dribble by Tabor. From the lane, no. There's Leasty with the rebound. Now Hydebrader will bring it up. 4.20 left to play, first period. Leasty, no. Rebound, Marty Brown. Tabor. Intended for Renkosik. Turnover. Coach Ron Felling is up. He's putting up two fingers, indicating a play that they probably have practiced many times. You see Billy Hybrider also putting up the two fingers. Leasty. Offensive foul, Rick Leasty. Team foul number three on Lawrenceville, out of bounds, Marquette. Again, the pressure defense. Tabor takes the lead pass. Marty Brown out high. 
Grand Cossack battles for the rebound with Rick Lewski. We have a jump ball. Lawrenceville, three for nine. Ottawa, three for nine. The difference, one free throw. And thus far, Ray, and you know, you know, you notice things like this. Uh, Lawrenceville a little short on their shooting, and this could be, again, we talked about the fact that they have played uh, three games in 36 hours, and that's not easy. Beautiful, beautiful block by Rick Leasty of an in, in close shot by Kim Connors. Out of bounds, Marquette. Behind the screen, Marty Brown. Tabor. Gets it to Ren Cossack. Six points, Keith Renkosik, 9-6 Marquette. He makes great use of that board. And he's going against Rick Leasty. Hydrator. Bill Hydrator hits from top of the key. 9-8 Lawrenceville trailing by one. Renkosik. Again, the lead goes back to three on the part of Marquette. Leasty working outside. Corner, Dickerson. Outside. Hydrater. Dickerson. Hydrater. Scheidler. Hydrater puts it up and hits another. Within one. Over two minutes remaining, first period. Out high, Marty Brown. Steps. Jim Shibley traveled. Now let's watch Lawrenceville attack the zone. As I say, as the ball moves, each time it pauses, the zone will get set. So you want a continuity of passing quickly. Into the lane goes Leasty. Beautiful. Leasty's been operating from a wing. That time he moved into the lane. And it's Lawrenceville by one. Tabor. What a board battle we had going there. And Wolf comes up with it for Lawrenceville. And I'm glad to see the officials. Everybody's got an equal chance. They're going up for it. That's good. That's good. Scheidler can't hit. Scheidler gets it back. He hits. Jay Scheidler has his first points of the game, and Lawrenceville now leads by three. And those could be two very important points because uh, it's only a sophomore, and getting that first basket can be important to a sophomore. Scheibley hits the side of the board, and there's Tim Wolf. Picked out of bounds by Marty Brown, a pass that was intended for Rick Leasty. We have 106 remaining in the first period, and we have what... Uh, Looks like what we had hoped for going here for the championship. Scheidler elects not to shoot from the corner. Leasty finds Dickerson. Now Hydrater outside in front of what is still a 2-1-2 zone. Let's see if Leasty slides into the middle. Scheidler, Hydrater. Now it's high post Dickerson. Wolf for the wing. But again, you'll see how that zone adjusts as the ball stops. The quicker you move it, the tougher it is for the zone to adjust. might be playing for one shot. We have about 30 seconds left in the period. At this point, I would say that they probably are. When they started with a minute, probably not. But now, since it's down to 25 seconds, they may. At least his shot was blocked. With 20 seconds left in the first period. Tabor. Underneath is Marty Brown. Five points, Marty Brown. Nine seconds left. Lawrenceville by one. Leasty. Balance shot hits the rim. Two seconds, one second. That's it. The end of the first quarter with the score. Lawrenceville 14, Marquette 13. This is Ray Scott at the Assembly Hall, Champaign Urbana, Campus, University of Illinois, the Class A. Championship of the Illinois High School Association is in the balance. First period, Lawrenceville leads Ottawa Marquette by 14 13. Second period underway, and it's grabbed off by Tim Wolf of Lawrenceville. It was kicked by Marty Brown, and that technically means out of bounds. Ron Felling just said to his Indians, you gotta move it. 
Eidbrader. Scheidler. Gets it inside to Leisty. Scoops the basket. Leisty hustles and gets it back, but we had a whistle earlier. And we had a foul on Jim Shively. In that situation, you'd like to say, uh, cancel the whistle. There's Ron Felling, the uh, coach of Lawrence. We'd like to say, just cancel the whistle. We'll take the basket. You can't do it. Least he puts it up. Won't drop. Out of bounds. Jump ball. No. Out of bounds. Marquette. Shibley. Lead pass is for Ren Cossack. Marty Brown from the baseline. Won't go. Jay Scheidler picks up his first personal foul. That's a fourth team foul on Lawrenceville. Three team fouls on Marquette. Out of bounds, Marty Brown will pass in. To Tabor. High to Shively. Marty Brown. Seven points for Marty Brown. It's Marquette by one. And Marty Brown came behind two beautiful picks to get that open shot. Ottawa's working very well together. Wolf tries to drive the baseline and shut off gives to Scheidler. Now it's Highbrader. Wolf. Scheidler hits his second one. If there's anything that'll change his own, it's that kind of shooting over it. And you notice how the pass is moved. It's bing, 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 and he was open. Now, any pause there, the zone would have adjusted. It would have shifted, and he would have been covered. Lawrenceville by a single point. Connors over Dickerson. Way short. There is Leasty. Biggest margin, three points. Each team is led by that many once. At least once. But Leasty tried to find Dickerson at the baseline, but the pass was behind him. Had a good idea, and that's the way to, uh, that's the kind of passes that really hurt his own, but uh, Dickerson already left. Tabor, the point man. Lead for Renkossi. He's fouled by Leasty. A second time around for that play. On that play, particular play, here we see it. They go behind, up on the replay. Beautiful play. He took it up there. Ben Kosick, uh, very strong around the boards. He doesn't look it, but he is. Leasty, by the way, has picked up his second personal foul. We have six minutes remaining. Ben Kosick now is hit on four of his five shots from the field. this afternoon in the semifinal game. Ron Felling decides it is time to have a meeting. Vargas pointed out something very interesting. Rick Leasty got in early foul trouble this afternoon in the second quarter, picked up his third personal foul. He didn't foul again the rest of the game. And that great shot is the problem. He went all for a half without fouling this afternoon. Can he do it now? He's got 22 minutes left in this game, and he's got three already. And he doesn't have to get the fifth to get him out of the game. Four would probably uh, almost force Ron Felling to take him out. See what happens. And Kosick misses, and rebounding is Scheidler. I say this when you got a team. Now you're going to find out uh, you know, uh, what the other guys can do, because I think at least he's going to have to be a little careful. Wolf, Dickerson, Scheidler. He's hit three. The young sophomore has hit three. Lawrenceville leads by a single point with 5.33 remaining first half. Tabor. Taken away by Scheidler. Lawrenceville plays good basic defense. When, they're, when a man beats them, they just head straight for the baseline. Heidbrader hits. Now, six field goals out of the backcourt. Three by Heidbrader, three by Scheidler. And it's Lawrence go by three. Biggest lead the Indians have enjoyed. Unmolested, Tabor. Nick Tabor hits his first one of the game. Got a good screen from Morty Brown on that play. 
There goes Hydrator. Hydrator deadly from top of the key. At least he steals it, but his foot was on the line. Let me point out one thing, Ray. You never know what's going to happen, but you've got to remember that Lawrenceville is hitting from outside. 20, 22, 23 foot shots. And those are not the best percentage shots. If you're going to win, you can't miss them. And they're not good percentage shots. Lawrenceville by three as Shively will pass in to Rankosic. Marty Brown coming outside to help. Now Tabor, who works the ball from the outside on most occasions. Shively elects not to shoot from long range. Shively, Marty Brown. And hustled by Shively. Underneath, Connors. Scheidler committed the foul. No basket. The foul occurred before the shot got off. I always like to mention this while it's going on because Tim Wolf is doing a magnificent job on Marty Brown thus far. And I say that because Brown's the kind of a boy that can come up and hit you with five baskets in a hurry. But thus far, Tim Wolf's really doing a job on him. Brent Kossick with nine points now. And Marquette pulls within two. 418 remaining first half. Scheidler rebounds. Boy, he gets up in the air. For a six foot backcourt man, I'd say he plays a lot bigger than that. Leasty. Ball out of bounds on a turnover. There they tried to move the ball quickly, but uh, at about the same time, Billy Hybrader decided to drive inside. Somebody's open. Shively, and Hybrader goes high for the rebound, so the turnover did not hurt them. Three-second violation. Somebody in the lane, and another turnover. Marty Brown. Working against Tim Wolf. Look at those feet move. Wolf is doing a test of tough job. When you find the other team leading score and he's getting help. Step. Right. Tim Wolf doing a very good job defensively, and I would have to believe that might have led into that traveling violation. You're 100% right. You get frustrated. It's still a 2 1 2 Marquette zone. Scheidler. Tim Wolf, Scheidler, kicked out of bounds by Marty Brown, and with 3.18 remaining in the first half, Lawrenceville passes in. Hybrader says to his teammates inside, come outside and help me. Let's see if they do. Leasty, Scheidler, Hybrader puts it up again. This time it's a re rebound for Renkosik. Tabor. Tabor hits his second field goal and another tie. The third tie. Scheidler. Four field goals for Scheidler. Barnesville by two. Oh! Jay Scheidler in a desperate attempt to intercept his call for a foul, and that is his third. So Scheidler and Leasty are playing with three. No player, Marquette, with more than one. That's a line of labor. Bonus situation, so we could have a tie. He scored 19 in the first half this afternoon, just two in the second half. Another tie. This one at 24. Leasty. 
Scheidler. Hydebrader. Marty Brown picks up a foul, his first. Fourth team foul on Marquette. Still not a bonus situation. Of course, Lawrenceville is battling one other thing. They expend a lot of energy on this press, and these are things that you see, as I said before, in the third period, and particularly in the fourth period. Lucy. Scheidler from way outside. And that is five field goals for Jay Scheidler. Two-point lead, Lawrenceville. Two minutes left, first half. Marty Brown, they're in the zone. Lawrenceville is in the zone. First time today they've been there. Big tip in for Renkossi. And he's fouled by Scheidler. And that is Scheidler's fourth personal foul. Look at that foul again now. What Scheidler, he is behind Renkossi. Got him on the back, right? But he was out position. Tremendous field goal by Renkossi. Tied at 26. We had a whistle. Foul on Connors. And Jay Scheidler has to leave the game in foul trouble. And he has been replaced. And that's your shooter right now, Ray Scott. He's your shooter. Roger Cool, number 30, a 5'10 senior. There he is. Leasty at the line. Leasty has scored five points and his first since picking up personal foul number three. We have a new total tournament attendance record of over 90,000. Rick Leasty puts Lawrenceville on top by two with 150 left to play in the first half. Marty Brown. Lawrenceville goes switching into his zone. Renkossi. He's deadly. 13 points for Renkossi. 28-28. Leasty. Comes up with an air ball. Wolf tries to save it, but his foot was down out of bounds. And with 120 remaining, Ottawa Marquette has a chance to move into the lead. Pass intercepted. At least he has it. Hydrator on a breakaway. Hydrator has scored 10 points now, and it's Lawrenceville by two with a minute remaining in the first half. 3-1 zone. Renkosik. Foul, Tim Wolf. His second. At the line, Renkosik, who has been the key so far in this first half. He's taken up the scoring slack, usually provided by Marty Brown. Brown has scored seven points, but Renkosik has been the man. He has great jumping ability, too. We've talked about some others, but Rukasik holds his own with anybody jumping. The 6'6 six, six senior brings Marquette to within a point. Another tie. One shot. Ron Felling tells his Lawrenceville Indians. Let's see if that will bring Marquette out of a zone. I would rather doubt it with 34 seconds left in the half. Couldn't ask for much more than a tie at this point in the game, could you, Ray? That's right. They're going to play catch for a few seconds. 20 seconds now. Dickerson, Wolf. Hydrator, 12 seconds. Wolf is a good shooter. Shively has it. Two seconds. One second in the air. Marty Brown. He took steps. It would not have counted had it hit. But meanwhile, the first half has come to an end. According to the scoreboard, the half is over. 
I did not hear a buzzer. Now it came to an end. So at halftime, the Class A championship is. Does he take many of your uh, suggestions, Irene? No, he doesn't. Not too many, but I, I have an awfully good time all year long, and my kids love it, so we enjoy it a lot. It's tied at 30-30. You ladies should be very happy, and thank you both for coming by here at halftime. And thanks for joining us, Irene Felling and Nancy Strickland. Now here again is Ed McCauley. Bill, I understand that you're a uh, cousin of Jay Shiner, who plays on the team, right? Yes, I am. And uh, as I read it, you're also dating Billy Hydrater. Tell me, uh, dating a basketball player, are there any um, oh, are there any problems that you have as far as having dates, training situations? Does he have to get home early, things like that? Well, like the night before his game, he has to be in pretty early to get his rest. And then, like, if practice goes bad, he'll be in a bad mood or something like that. How do you react when he's in a bad mood? Oh, I just put up with it. Aaron Dickerson, and on my right, Mr. and Mrs. Jean Renkuski, and they have young gentlemen playing in this game. The uh, Renkuskis, of course, Keith Renkuski of Ottawa Marquette, and Stan Dickerson, who told me, Mrs. Dickerson, that he's a garbage man. The coach says, you're the man that gets all the rebounds and all the garbage buckets. So it's not a very glamorous title, but he gets the job done, right? Right. How do you feel about having a son in a championship game, Mr. Dickerson? Well, very good. That don't happen very often. Mr. Renkoski, how does it feel to have your son playing out here? Real proud. Now, is it tough having a basketball player in the family, Ms. Renkoski? Oh, it's exciting. Is it? Yes, it is. He spends a lot of time on basketball. How about the books? Uh, quite a bit of time gotta, on that, too. Got to pressure him a little bit? No, not too much. Good. Very good. Thank you both very much. Mr. and Mrs. Gene Renkoski, Ottawa Marquette, Mr. and Mrs. Byron Dickerson, the parents of two of the players here, and we'll be into the second half of the championship game very shortly. Thank you. Uh, I will be surprised if he stays in the zone, but we'll see what happens. Do you anticipate, Ray Scott, that he will stay I'm in the zone? I'm going to ask Bob Starr what he <laughs> thinks. Oh, we get a two, two to one vote here. <laughs> what do you think, Bob? I think he may back off a little bit because he has two of his horses in foul trouble. Okay, game tied at 30, second half underway. And Scheidler is not starting. Dickerson grabs the tip off. Hydrator now as the team in white, Lawrenceville, moves left to right. Wolf puts it up. And there to rebound is Shibley. Marty Brown. Ben Kossick. 17 points for Keith Ben Kossick. Marquette by two. Now we see that personnel factor with uh, Roger Cool in there shooting. Ben Kossick gets position and gets the rebound. Dickerson picks up Tabor. Unmolested, Kim Connors. Leasty gets the rebound, and he is fouled by Connors. Third personal foul on Kim Connors. Ron Cumming. Shouted encouragement to his players, which we will not repeat on the air. <laughs> Short, rebound, Marty Brown. Marty Brown, top of the key. Rick Leasty rebounds. Hybrider. The last two times down, Roger Cool, who's in as a substitute for Lawrenceville, has taken the shot. Lead pass for Marty Brown. Hydrator saves it. We had a whistle, meanwhile, before that ball ever got across the timeline. Walking. But the ball bounds Lawrenceville. Ball has gone to Roger Cool, and he shot twice. Now this, again, you always try to move that ball to your power. You move it to, uh, move it to the shooters, those that have been carrying you all year long. Dickerson tries to hit. Wolf tries for the rebound, loses it to Connors. A seven of ten from the field. They're in the man-to-man, -man, Lawrenceville. An offensive foul has been called. This is very important, Ray, because it puts him into that penalty situation that much quicker. Jim Shively picks up that foul. Lawrenceville trailing by two. Lawrenceville has not scored in the opening two minutes here of the second half. Leasty. 
Eastie has now scored eight points, and the game is tied at 32. Tabor with the ball, working against Hybrader. Brown puts it up. Cannot hit. They hit the wire at the top, out of bounds, Lawrenceville. And Marty Brown is having trouble hitting. Well, once again, let's give credit where credit is due. Tim Wolf of Lawrenceville is doing a magnificent job on Marty Brown, which uh, goes to say that it's not Brown's fault that he's not doing well, and Wolf is playing a whale of a ball game thus far. Leasty with a turnaround. Leasty has scored 10 points now. And Lawrenceville leads by two. thought about that call and coach Bob Strickland was up with a you surely you just look on his face Leasty big battle for the rebound jump ball there's Jay Wolf again Marty Brown oh what competitors it looked like for a moment that Wolf took a swipe, Ray, but he was swiping at the ball as it popped up over Brown. It comes off to Shibley. Lead pass for Connors. Follow up. Tabor. Jim Tabor, Nick Tabor has scored eight points, and the game is tied at 34. Leasty. Dickerson back to Leasty. Good give and go. Now 12 points for Rick Leasty. He's matched his first half output. They say you can't do that against the zone. Well, they, they did, did it. it very well. This is Marty Brown. He still can't hit. Thomas tries to save it. Comes out to cool. He's going to hold it up in the backcourt for Hybrader. Let me point out this. Uh, Brown is forcing a few shots now. He's, uh, he hasn't been scoring. Hybrader's shot will not hold in the bucket. And here comes Marquette. It's always better to wait for that shot to come to you. Don't force him. Foul, Wolf. Number three on Wolf. So Wolf joins Rick Leasty in three personal fouls. Out of bounds, Shively of Marquette. Midway, third period. Marty Brown, Wolf right on top of him. Tabor. Marty Brown, way short. And Dickerson grabs it off. Now Hydrator will bring it up. Wolf. To Hyde, to uh, Dickerson. Dickerson. Lead for Leasty. Leasty has scored all eight points for Lawrenceville in the second half. Lawrenceville by four. I think that's the biggest lead any team has enjoyed. Brent Cossack. Tabor. Marty Brown. Off balance shot goes. Marty Brown has nine points now. Another important shot. I believe that's his first bucket of the second half. Leasty is four for five from the field in the second half. Wolf. Hydrator. Cool. Hydrator. Leasty from outside. Rick Leasty is hot. Ten points in the second half, 16 for the game. Marty Brown goes to the basket. His left-handed layup misses, and we have a jump ball. Tell you, when you see Leasty, or for that matter, Scheidler on Lawrenceville with time, you know, when they go up on that jump shot with time, look out. We have the foul on Marty Brown. His second. Bob Strickland is not happy. The coach of Ottawa Marquette. Ball out of bounds. Tim Wolf. Lee 
travel. They put that ball again in traffic. That's a dangerous pass coming over the top against the zone defense because somebody's always behind you and you wind up covered by three men. Only 2.10 left in the third period. Tabor. Nick Tabor has scored 10 points. Lawrenceville's lead is down to two. And now we have a zone press. Marquette coming out with pressure. Underneath, Leasty. Leasty now has scored 12 points in the second half. Wolf goes over the back of Marty Brown and draws a foul, and Tim Wolf now has picked up four personal fouls, and he joins Jay Scheidler with four personal fouls. It's timeout in the third quarter. With Leasty, 12. He scored all 12 of their points in the second half. Wolf will stay in and play with four personal fouls. Now, psychologically, the, the uh, advantage, you might say, turns to Marty Brown, who's being covered by Tim Wolf, because it's just difficult to be as aggressive playing defense when you've got four fouls. The pass is to Connors. Marty Brown. Renkowski low. Leasty rebounds. The pass is to Hybrader. pointing to the paper airplane that's out on the floor. Official timeout to get rid of it. And they should take the timeout. It's unfortunate that fans don't realize what that does. You make a drive and your foot hits that paper and you can break a leg. Now a minute 12 left in the third period. Lawrenceville with the ball and a four-point lead. They're not covering Wolf too tightly in that corner over there. He's a good shooter from there. Dickerson battles for the rebound. Leasty gets it. He loses it. 50 seconds left in the third period. This is Tabor of Marquette. Connors. Foul by Dickerson. Replay is worth it this time again. Watch that movement of the body. Difficult shot. Up. In motion. Beautiful. Against the board. Lays it in and he's going to go up with a chance for a three-pointer. Kim Connors could bring Marquette within a point. Rebounding was Dickerson. Cool in the backcourt. The pass hit Leasty. Marty Brown. Tied at 42. 30 seconds left in the half. Hydebrader. Dickerson. Dickerson's first points of the game. First points other than by Leasty for Lawrenceville in the second half. 15 seconds left third period. Lawrenceville by two. Renkowski could tie it up. Foul. On Cool. Marquette, eight seconds left, third period. Roger Brown. Marty Brown. 13 points for Marty Brown. Two seconds, one second. There's the buzzer. Ben. Ray, we mentioned about the psychological aspect of uh, Tim Wolf picking up his fourth foul. I believe that uh, Marty Brown has scored at least two or three baskets since Wolf picked up that fourth foul. Takes that edge, that aggressive edge. You can't gamble as much. We have had no substitutions by Marquette. One substitution only for Lawrenceville. The starting fives are in as we start the fourth period. And it comes off to Lawrenceville. Coach Ron Felling of Lawrenceville said the kids can rest on Monday, but not tonight. This is Scheidler. He has scored 10 points. Leasty. Rick Leasty with a tremendous second half has scored 20 points in all and 14 in the second half. Marty Brown is going to bring it up for Marquette. It's a very wise move, bring it up against Tim Wolf. 
over Dickerson, and he misses completely. Leasley grabs it off. Travel. Traveling Hybrider out of bounds on the turnover, Marquette. To keep in mind, Wolf and Scheidler, both with four personal fouls. Tabor driving on Hybrider. Leasty rebound. Traveling on Leasty. He knew it. He knew it. Just he reached for the ball and he just, just held it that second. Two consecutive turnovers by Lawrenceville, but they still lead by two. 7.08 left in the game. Coach Bob Strickland of Ottawa, Marquette shouting out instructions to his players. He wants them to set up the wheel. Traveling, Marty Brown. Turnover. Now it is Marquette with a turnover. And both teams right now are showing the effects of the pressure, the tension. They're tired. Scheider's going to bring it up against the press. Leasty. He elects not to shoot until teammates are in position. 6.40 remaining. Hybrider's going to try and get something set up. Leasty from long range. What a shooting exhibition by Rick Leasty. 16 points in the second half. 22 in all. Lawrenceville by four. Shibley. Played very loose right now by Scheidler. Marty Brown, guarded by Wolf. Tabor, will they elect to shoot from long range? They're giving them the outside shot, are the Indians. Six minutes left in the game. Lawrenceville by four. Marquette with the ball. Conniff, lead for Renkoski. Renkosik. Keith Renkosik now has scored 19 points. Scheidler. Across the timeline to Wolf. He holds it up for Scheidler. Now Hydebrader. Dickerson. Scheidler puts it up. No. Scheidler gets it back. No. Dickerson rebounds. No for Leasty. Three misses in a row. Yes, but those offensive rebounds add up. You can't give a club three shots. Tabor drives on Hydrator. This is Marty Brown. Ren Klasik ties it up. Hydrator brings it up now with five minutes left. Puts it up. Partially blocked. Rebound. Shively. Traveling. Traveling was called by one official. Ron Felling felt that a charging foul had been called by the other. The ruling is out of bounds to Dickerson. Now to Leasty. 4.50 left in this Class A championship game. Ron Felling is, uh, was talking to the official. Bingo. Jay Scheidler hits his first points of the second half. 12 overall. Lawrenceville by two with four and a half left. Lawrenceville is changing their defense. Now they're going to sag. They're going to stay away from the ball, make them shoot from outside. They know they got foul problems. Tabor puts it up. We have a foul on Hydebrader. His second. Nick Tabor goes to the line. He's two of two in free throws. He has scored 10 points overall. Nick Tabor very wisely went right at the defense. If they're going to stay away from you, go right at them. Two shots. Nick Tabor. We could have another tie. Unofficially, we have had thus far, I believe, 11 ties in the game. That's not official, but that's enough. <laughs> Lawrenceville led by one first period. Score tied at 30 halftime. 44, it was tied under three quarters, and it's now Lawrenceville by one. Hydrator to Leasty. Dickerson. He travels. No field goal. Ron Felling looks on. Out of bounds. 
No goal. Lawrenceville leading by one. Tabor brings it up with 4.15 remaining. Five seconds now for station identification. WCIA Champaign. W49AA Springfield. Keith Renkosi could put his team into a tie or in the lead. He has scored 21 points. Two free throws. teams are a little tired, Ray, and I don't blame them. This uh, club on the floor, this is their third game in the last 24 hours. Lisi is fouled by Connus. Number four on Kim Connus. The ball will go out of bounds. We are not yet in a bonus situation as far as Marquette is concerned. There's a foul on Marty Brown. That is his third. Scheidler was fouled, and now we are going to have the bonus situation, and this could be significant. Yes, and Jay Scheidler shooting about 68% from the free throw line. It's a sophomore, young man, four minutes left. Team leading by one. One and one. Ray Scott, little pressure. Bill by two. 13 points for this young man. Remember what I said about follow through today? He follows through beautifully, right to the hoop. Marty Brown gets it across the timeline. Now Tabor. And Marty Brown down in the post. Renkosik with a turnaround. Keith Renkosik with a tremendous game, 23 points. Leasty, Dickerson, elects not to shoot. Lawrenceville with the ball and a one-point lead with three and a half minutes remaining. Scheidler. How long will they play catch? Now, are they in the delay, or are they just trying to look for a clean shot? 319, 318, could be either one. A little bit early. But it's so difficult for a coach to make this decision, Ray Scott. When you've got the lead, you just don't know. It's just it's a matter of minutes which way you do it. Inside, he's fouled, I believe. Yes. Leasty is fouled by Renkosik. Renkosik picks up personal foul number two, and at the line, two of four in free throws, is Rick Leasty. I would say if I were a coach, I'd have to say, well, we're going to delay, but if we get the good one, we're going to take it. Two-point lead, Lawrenceville, 3.06 remaining. Three-point lead, Lawrenceville. Now it becomes critical for Marquette because if they do not score, it means that Lawrenceville can come down and go into a deeper freeze, and they'll have to go and get him. Shot selection is all important here now for Marquette. This is Ren Kossi. And Hydrater gets a very big rebound. Little Billy Hydrater, 5-9. Two thirty-five remaining, Lawrenceville by three. Double teaming the ball now is Marquette. Wolf saves that pass. And now Marquette may have to go out and foul. They'll be very wise if they keep that ball. The good free throw shooter should handle it. Now remember, there is no jump ball called here unless a man is played right. within six feet. Here's a very important factor, Stan Dickerson who can handle the ball, is shooting 40% only from the free throw line. I think if I knew that, every time he got the ball, I'd go after him. 
This is now Shiloh with the ball. Two minutes remaining. Marquette going to a man-to-man -man now. They're not accustomed to playing man-to-man. -man. They've been in the zone all day, all through this tournament. This is Leasty with the ball. We have 145 remaining. Hydrator to Scheidler. 140 remaining. Lawrenceville leads by three. The state Class A championship is in the balance. This is Scheidler now. Gets help from Hydrader with a minute 30 seconds remaining. Hydrader gets away. Drives for the basket. He is accused of a double dribble. Double turnover. Dribble. 126 remaining. Turnover. And at this point, Bob Strickland wants to talk things over. Lost on a steal, and Marty Brown broke a tie. And remember what uh, Coach Bob Dallas told us when they were in that stall? He wanted to set up an out-of-bounds play, but in all the pandemonium and confusion, his players could not hear him shop those instructions. All right, let's see what happens now. Out-of-bounds, pressure defense all over the court by Lawrenceville. I think they'll probably, they, I don't think they'll stay that pressure, just like this. They'll go back with him. I think they'll probably try to make him go from outside. Tabor puts it up. Nick Tabor scores. Lawrence go 54, Marquette 53. Wolf helps out, back to Hydrator. They get it across the timeline. We have one minute remaining right now. Dickerson comes outside to help. Now Rick Leasty, 55 seconds left. George, uh, Tim Wolf. Oh, I'm getting excited. Yes, Hydrator. I wouldn't let Dickerson handle the ball. And then I say that only because he's only hitting 40% of his free throws. That becomes critical. I'll tell you, at least if he gets a break, he'll go. 35 seconds left now. Scheidler with the ball. This is Hydrator. Will we have a foul? They'd they lose foul, the they ball. better do something. The ball comes to Wolf, guarded by Marty Brown. 23 seconds left. Rick Leasty with the ball. Lawrenceville by one, trying for their second championship in three years. We have a foul on Tabor. To the line, Hybrader, who was the hero in free throws in the closing seconds of their double overtime victory over Saragordo. Billy Hybrader. With 15 seconds left. Moles them. Billy Hybrider standing up there, his teammate. Jay Scheidler comes up and pats him on the shoulder. Probably says, hey, if you miss this, we could blow the championship. <laughs> Lawrence goal 54. Marquette 53. Bill Hybrider is the young man on the spot. Left. Drop ball. Dickerson. Shibley seconds left. Dickerson came up with a key play. Yes, the one thing we always look for in basketball, what did he hit? He hit the back of the rim. He wasn't short. He, as they say, he had the courage to put it up there. It looked beautiful all the way, and he hit the back of the rim. That's all you can do. Better watch Brown, though. Look at that. Hybrider saves it. No, has it. Nine seconds. Time out, Marquette. Bill can't afford to foul. They can't afford to send in to the line with a one-on-one -on -one situation. But I'll tell you, the two starting lineups are in here. They're going to win it, lose it. They've been battling each other all night. They're two great champions. The pass Look at in. That. It's stolen by Leasty. Leasty stole it. It goes out of bounds off Hybrider with two seconds left. Rick Leasty stole the inbounds pass. Two seconds left. The pass in will be by Shibley to Marty Brown. One second, it's in the air. No! Lawrenceville wins! remain now four seconds now three seconds and right about here is where the ball goes out of hybrider two seconds left at that instant but rick leasty 
who came up with a tremendous scoring game, came up with a clutch play where Ed McCauley, I would just have to believe, fantastic anticipation by Rick Leasty as to where that inbounds pass was going to go. Well, they tell me I'm supposed to go up to the north end of the court, so I better go, but I'll tell you one thing. It's great to see a man that has carried this team, not alone, but has done such a great job, and he's right there at the end, and he's got the courage. He's got the courage to take that risk. He's got the courage and the confidence in himself to go out and get that ball. Rick Leasty takes the unofficial scoring honors with 24 points. Keith Renkosik, in a determined, tremendous effort, came up with 23 points for Ottawa Marquette. And I know that Bob Starr and Ed McCauley, when they have an opportunity, will, will echo uh, my thoughts. What a tremendous climax to a great tournament where all attendance records have been broken. Tremendous interest in just the third year of class play here by the Illinois High School Association. And what a fantastic game. What a dramatic finish. What tremendous showings by these young men. Bob Strickland and his Ottawa Marquette team finish a season 29 and four. Ron Felling and his Lawrenceville Indians have now won two of the three Class A championships, winning in 1972. Last year it was Ridgeway, and now it is Lawrenceville's Indians once again. From the appearance of things out on the floor, it's about time for the 1974 Class A champions to receive the trophy, indicating that they are the best in the state. A big moment for these players. They've won out over more than 400 teams that began play in the tournament back in February. We're going to join Harry Fitzhugh, the Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association for the trophy presentation. So ladies and gentlemen, the next voice you will hear on our basketball network will be that of Mr. Fitzhugh. In behalf of the Illinois High School Association, we wish to express sincere appreciation to everyone, and there were many who cooperated in so very many ways in making this tournament a great success and one that will be long remembered. We especially thank the Assembly Hall personnel for their fine work and making this beautiful facility available for this tournament. We would also like, we would also like to pay tribute to you, the fans, for your outstanding sportsmanship here these past two days. You are great. And now we would like to introduce Mr. James Brim of Cryopia High School, Concord, and President of the Board of Directors of the Illinois High School Association. Mr. Brim will present the individual and team awards. Mr. Brim. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. It's a privilege to represent the 780 high schools of the Illinois High School Association. And at this time, I'd like to ask Coach Strickland of the Marquette Crusaders to come forward. <laughs> Coach Strickland, congratulations to you, your team, your school, and your community for your efforts as you've gone down this tournament trail. These are individual basketball charms for you and the members of your team. Again, congratulations. Captain Brown. Captain, congratulations to you and your team for a hard-fought game and for your efforts as you've come down the trail of this championship game. Here is your trophy as the second place team in the 1974 Class A basketball tournament. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Coach Felling of the Lawrenceville Indians. Coach Felling. Congratulations to you, Coach, to your team your school and your community. Thank you very much. These are basketball charms for you and the members of your team. And these are the nets from this game. Congratulations. Captain Leasy, congratulations to you and your team for winning the championship in this 1974 Class A.
passing dramatic moments when it appeared that victory would be snatched away from them. Marquette, well, I just can't say enough about their efforts in this tournament. Ottawa Marquette seeking to become the first, the first private school, the first Catholic school to ever win a state tournament and to be ever so close. This game, I know, in the minds of the young men who participated will be replayed over and over again. Now, let's go to Bob Starr in Tournament Central. Thank you very much, Ray Scott. Ed McCauley is out on the playing floor and getting the winning team together. For Meanwhile, we've just received word that Ed McCauley is ready to bring us an interview with the winning team members. So let's switch to Ed McCauley out on the playing floor. Well, here we are with the Lawrence villain in. Well, fellas, where are you in the state now? Where are you? Where do you rank? Number one. And I'll tell you, it was a great final game. Ron Felling first, the coach of Lawrenceville. I'd like to talk to you. I think the only way after a game like that is I will ask you your reaction, and it may seem strange, but I'm sure you want to get it into Ottawa Marquette. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a fine ball team. Uh, every team in this tournament, the three that we beat out, I said earlier I thought that we had the toughest way to go ahead, and we sort of went through Murder's Row from time to the sectional, super sectional on in, and Cerro Gordo, and uh, uh, Chicago Christian, and what a fine Ottawa Marquette ball club, and, and uh, I just, I just know, how, I don't, I know how they feel because it, it, playing that hard and losing, it must be heartbreaking, but it's a real tribute to our kids, and I'm so proud of these fellas. All right, a couple of things I think the fans would like to know from you. Late in the uh, third period and the fourth period, you changed your defense a couple of times. What did you do and why? Well, we knew they were coming down. We seemed to be getting a little stagnant, and we were in foul trouble. We were... Uh, we had three kids with uh, four fouls from the last quarter on in, uh, and one with maybe three. So we had to just uh, maybe hope that it'd stand them out and keep them from penetrating the basket and hopefully make them take the outside shot and also to keep our kids out of foul trouble. And one more question before I start talking to some of your boys, Ronnie. That last throw in, Ottawa Marquette, what did you set up? It, did you set up anything in the huddle? Did you tell Rick Leasty to try to steal it? No, I'll tell you what, when you got a super player, when you got a super player, Ed, it seems like you can't win a state championship without a super player. And, and it seems like they always have the knack of coming up with a big play, the big rebound, the big basket. And Ricky has been just one way of a high school ball player. He scored over 2,200 points, I think, now. And, and the big steals, and he plays with a lot of intensity. But it was a great team effort, and with every one of them. And uh, Ed, I'm just proud to be here and proud to be associated with a fine group of boys. I'm going to ask Timmy Wolf to come over here because, come Timmy, in, come in here, because I think, you know, you talk about it and we will, and we will congratulate all the great players and the offensive play. Timmy, you did a great job on Marty Brown, and if there's anything, it's defense. He's a great player, it really is. I'm, glad, I'm just glad I could have been in the game to play against him. And that's a great compliment to him. Uh, how did you play him, and were you uh, nervous there at the end? Yes, I was. I was very nervous, but we pulled it through. I'm just glad of it. Well, Timmy, this is your second. Congratulations. Let's get some of the other boys over here. Where's Rick? He is busy. Hey, Jay, let's get everybody over here, fellas. Stan, you know, you said before the tournament and during the tournament that it was your job to go in there and rebound and get everything off of that backboard, and I want to tell you, you did a magnificent job. Well, there's nothing to say, man. We I just don't know what to say. I you know, you, you just can't imagine. Uh, did you think you could win it? Oh, uh, I, I didn't even think about it. I just took each game at a time, you know, and just, just tried to win each one. And, well, we did, you know. <laughs> we Never had anything like this happen in your life before, have you? Well, I just remember coming up here two years ago and watching it, and I'd say, if everybody works hard, we can come back when I'm a senior. We did, man. We did. Stan, congratulations. Rick? Rick Leasty, a man who unofficially had 24 points, led the tournament in scoring, made a magnificent save at the end of the ball game. Now that took a little guts, Rick Leasty. You're out there trying to steal that ball. What was going through your mind? Well, I figured we was going to win it. We had to get the ball back, and I, I figured I was the one was going to do it. And but he had four fouls at the time, and he didn't worry about that. You just went out and got it. That's right. I figured there wasn't enough time. If I did foul out, they couldn't do no harm, so I tried for it. This is your second one. Which one is better, the first one or the second one? I believe this one is. This is my last last one I can ever win, and this is my greatest one right here. Well, Rick Leasty, I'll tell you, you played a magnificent, magnificent tournament, scoring individually, but you got a magnificent team with you. It was, a, it was really a team effort, wasn't it? I know. It's a pleasure playing with all these guys. All of them are great, and I don't know what I'd do without them. Jay, come in here. That was Rick Leasty, undoubtedly the most valuable player in the tournament. 
That's a rookie. He's a sophomore. All these other fellows have been through it before. But Jay Scheindler, it's really an experience, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, I, I don't have anything to say. It's just, it's just great. It's just an experience that I, I just never forget. You know, it's a, it's a situation where the shots that you shoot, the long set shots, you got a little time to think, really. Uh, how do you remain, how do you keep your composure? Well, uh, my brother was good at that, and he told me that, you know, when he was in school, not to get riled and everything, so I just try to keep my head, and uh, it works out pretty good for me. Hey, Billy, where's Billy? Come over here. You stay here, Jay. You know, one fellow I would like to talk a little bit about now, uh, you're graduating, so I can ask you this. Uh, Ron Felling, pretty tough coach, isn't he? He's a great coach, I'll tell you. He can just, he can do anything. He, he's just a great coach, and there's nothing you can say about him, just that he's great. You know, late in the ball game, it's your job to control everything, and everything rides on you. What goes through your mind when you're out there with a one-point lead and everybody taking shots at you? I just got, just one thing's on my mind, just the job I have to do, and it just runs through it for 32 minutes or however long the game is. It's double overtime, but I don't know. I gave him a chance to take it. I have to go off my knee, missing the one-on-one, -on -one, and then pass it back into their team. I gave him a chance to get it. I don't know. I'm just glad we won it. I just won it. Well, Billy, I'll say this. You say you gave him a chance, but I'll tell you, they, would not, they wouldn't have needed the chance if you hadn't played as well as you had earlier. But the thing impresses me about the, your whole aggregation, uh, you know, Rick scored tonight, and uh, he scores a lot of times, but it seems that that doesn't really make any difference. It seems that everybody on your ball club contributes. Sure. We got, we got so many shooters on our team, we can just give it, give it to anybody. Anybody can shoot. Rick, he just, there's nothing you can say that he's just the greatest. I want to talk to one other young man, the substitute. Roger, is it? Roger Cool. Uh, boy, it's tough being in there off the bench, isn't it? It's hair-raising. <laughs> How did you feel? Well, my stomach just turned flip-flop when I went in there. Well, it's a great experience and one you'll remember all of your life. Roger, congratulations. And uh, tell me again, fellas, where are you? And once again, my congratulations to all of you as the 1974 Class A Basketball Tournament Champions. It's an honor very well deserved because you all played very hard for it. Now back to Tournament Central. You know, we really had some iron men out here this evening. The official uh, summary was just handed me here of this game. Ottawa Marquette played that pressure-packed championship game with exactly five players, not a substitution. Only one substitution on the part of Lawrenceville. Roger Cool was the sixth man to play. And you know, uh, I can't help but think, Bob Starr, as you try to summarize a game like this, it's almost unfair to summarize a game based on the cold statistics of so many points or so many rebounds because there are so many little things that will never show up in the summer that were done by both teams and the part of Ottawa Marquette to keep them in the game and the part of the, part of the Lawrenceville Indians to have them win this uh, very cherished state championship. But for the sake of the record, Rick Leasty hit 10 of 19 from the field. He was 4 of 6 at the free throw line, 24 points in all, 4 points for Tim Wolf, 2 for Stan Dickerson, 10 apiece for Bill Hybrader and Jay Scheidler, and Roger Cool did not score. For Ottawa Marquette, a tremendous performance by Keith Renkosik, who scored 23 points, 10 of 17 from the field. 4 points for Kim Connors, 13 Marty Brown, Nick Tabor, 13. Jim Shively did not score. So uh, those are the statistics of the game as far as they go, but so much more went into it, and uh, we'd certainly be remiss if we did not offer our congratulations to all of the teams, all eight teams who traveled this very long tournament trail since uh, February, earned their way to this tournament. Some fell by the wayside in the first round, some in the semifinal. And who knows, maybe, uh, maybe Sarah Gordo's uh, Jim Blickensurfer was right when he said he sort of had a feeling after that double overtime game on opening day when his Sarah Gordo team lost to Lawrenceville, he said, I sort of have a feeling that maybe that was the real championship. But we had great thrills here, and we hope that you enjoyed them along with us. So now uh, Bob Starr has something that he'd like to add. Bob? Thank you, Ray. You know, the sponsors are glad to be able to bring you these tournament games on television and would like to hear from you about our coverage. We're sure your thoughts and comments will prove helpful in the future. So just drop us a card or letter. Write to Basketball Box 731, Champaign, Illinois, 61820. That's Basketball Box 731, Champaign, Illinois, 61820. Now speaking for all of us connected with this telecast of this uh, wonderful event, it's been an exceptionally fine tournament, but from every possible angle, it's a kind of event that we all look forward to from year to year. 
and uh, when you're here, you, you can't help but sense the competitive spirit that is shared by all of the teams, nor can you help becoming a part of it. And uh, I guess that I'd like to say now anything that you'd like to add. No, that's the evening, but once again, I'd like to add my congratulations to Lawrenceville. They're the champions of the 1974 Class A tournament, and we also want to commend all of the excellent teams who took part. They can all be justly proud of their performance. Now this is Ed McCauley along with Ray Scott and Bob Starr saying so long for... You're in there. We build better machines for the business of forming. And for the country company. We're a little different than most insurance people. Our administrative engineer here in Champaign-Urbana has been Fred Geyer. Tom Nelson and Dennis Nelson were our floor managers. Our assistant director has been Mark Kruger. Bill Lotzer was the production manager of this telecast. Our director was Bill Helms. Our producers have been Don Aries and Bruce McGee. Executive producer, Rick Hawley. This program has been produced for International Harvester and the country companies by Hawley Aries Productions.